this is, this is, this is. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, let's get into some of these calls. Um, I was journaling. Before we do that, I just wanted to say, if you wanted to call in, be part of the, the whole party here, the number is 360-830-6660. Um, call, leave a message, talk to me about anything you want to talk about, music, MXPX, uh, past, present, future. Of course, uh, if you want to talk about your life, about relationships, about struggles, about we t last week we talked about uh, leadership and, and having bosses that are hard to work for, um, things like that. So, I mean, whatever you want to talk about. We haven't gotten it in any sex advice. You know, MXPX was on, on Loveline back in the day, but we were so young and so we were a little too timid. You know, we kind of had fun with it. I, I got to say we had fun with it, but we were just kind of making fun of everything most of the time. But uh, I promise if you do call me with anything serious, I will take it seriously and uh, we'll talk about it. So keep the conversation going. If you've called in um, before, please call in again. Let's just keep that conversation going. Um, all right. Thank you for your orders. I was just uh, hanging with my mom today. She's she's uh, printing, right? She was printing today. She ran out of shirts, so she had to source some blank T-shirts to print more on. Um, but that's all happening. It's all happening. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Um, we truly are a mom and pop situation. MXPX.com. Thank you. All right. Um, Let's get to let's get to your calls, you guys. Um, what I was talking about uh, before, again, before before we, I get to your calls, I did want to mention like I was writing in my journal earlier because because I like to do that. So I wanted to mention this on the podcast because this is kind of part of what I part of what I do to 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 make sense of everything. So journaling, you know, is for me it's like a document of my days and and. And I don't journal every day like I should, but I try to. And um, I should grab my journal right now. I use a moleskin, um, just a black, little black journal book, blank pages. Um, actually, I think some, some pages are blank. These are, this one's lined. So I started using lines. It just keeps things more in order. But this is the book, the journal I use. And I just... I'll fill these up. And I've talked about these journals before, you know, but, you know, in case you were wondering, does he really do what he says he does? Well, I wouldn't be talking about it multiple times, I don't think, if I kept, I'm still, you know, writing in this journal. But, um, you know, usually when I do something of note, I'll be like, okay, I got to journal that. And so I'll get on a, when I get on a plane, that's a perfect time because you're sitting there, you're usually not on your phone. Um, People today usually are on their phones, but I'll just, I'll write down the date, write down what day it is, and I'll, I'll talk about what I was doing today. I'll talk about what I did yesterday. I'll talk about what I did up until the last time that I wrote. So I try to have, you know, I miss plenty of things. There's plenty of details I miss. There's things, but if it's of some note, I can at least write a little sentence about that and then move on just so that later on I can go back into my, my journal and I've got multiple of these. I've got a bunch of these. And I can find dates from like 2014. I can find date 2012, 2009, 2004, you know. Um, uh, <laughs> so like, I'll just, I won't even get into it, but I'll just say like November 8th, 2022. Okay, I've got a lot of life to update here. Well, for starters, I'm now 46 years old. I made it. So we put the nine variations on sale November 4th. I'm still trying to get all the orders out. It's been five days. It's been insane. Um, I, I, won't, I won't go on, but <laughs> just I talk about what, what, what's going on in life and, the, the, you know, the big things. And, and I'll go from here about talking about the vinyl and I'll talk about, you know, more vinyl. <laughs> uh, we got through the vinyl. So, like. You know, this is talking about my parents, talking about Thanksgiving, talking about Christmas stuff, talking about stress, talking about, you know, whatever. Um, uh, talking about what I'm working on, like I'm working on, you know, new album stuff. So it is, uh, it, it, it helps me put my life in order and I don't have to, life is such a blur 
So this helps piece the past a little bit for me. Um, and I don't go back and read my journal all the time, really. Like, not not really. Every, you know, maybe once or twice a year, I'll pick one up and thumb through a page. But um, I don't know. I, you know, whether or not I ever use it, maybe I could use some of those ex excerpts for an actual, like, publication. But it is my inner thoughts. And, you know, I don't know... <laughs> I don't know. Do you you don't you don't admit to murder in here, do you? No. Somebody somebody could get this. That that's the thing is, you've heard a lot of you have you know been listening to this podcast for a long time. You've heard my story about Mexico with Tumble Down, and me getting my music, my song journal, uh, my song notebook stolen. And my whole backpack was stolen. So my passport, my money, my song notebook, my journals. I had a couple journals. A lot of times I'll, I'll carry a couple of the old journals in my bag. In case I want to reference song ideas, because I'll write lyrics in here too. It's not just about what I did. If I have an idea, a lot of times I'll just write in in, in my journal. Uh, and a lot of times it's not even a lyric idea. It's like a, a poetic idea, almost a, po a poem, a rap, something that's just like flowing. I'm just stream of consciousness writing. I do that with my journal. So can't can't speak highly enough of having one of these around. And like I said, I don't even do it every day, but, but just the, the few times I do do it um, throughout my life, it's really added up. And it's a really bum, big bummer that a couple of these got stolen and are gone forever. So I'll, a piece of my life is missing as far as I'm concerned, because I would use, if I ever did write a book or, or use my life as a storyline for something, I, I, there's things that I'm going to forget. There's missing pieces. It's just, that's just the way it is. I mean... <sighs> what are you going to do? So journal. And now, of course, you can journal and, and have it on your cloud. And so you can type. Uh, I've got some journals written written up in the cloud as well. But I, I kind of like to have a paper document. And, and the danger is that it can be destroyed. And that is a bummer. But, you know, if you have a really important page, take a picture of it just in case. Like an important song lyric that's only written down once. Take, take a picture of those lyrics because I've sitting there in that Tijuana passport office. I was just sitting there racking my brain. It was already, this was like around 2013, 2012. Um, I was already poisoned by social media and by digital, just having a phone all the time. And so I didn't remember. You know, the the songs that I had written, I had just written down in that notebook and just knew that I could go back to it. So I, my point is, is I was racking my brain to try to remember some of, the, some of those lyrics. But, you know, if you don't think you have to remember the lyrics, you don't remember them because there's plenty of other things to remember, believe me. Believe me. Um, all right. Now, can we get to the voicemails? Come on. Let's go. Let's go with it. Furnace festing. Let's go. All right. Thanks for calling in. Once again, the number is 360-830-6660. If you got something you want to say, get on it today. Don't wait. Let's go. Hey, Mike, Ryan, uh, calling me from North Dakota here. Um, been a long time fan, and I was just curious. I know there's been a lot of talk about the album coming out this year. Um, as a big vinyl fan and purchaser of the box set, I was wondering if you guys have given any thought to maybe a, uh, a version of the new album, like a variant of the vinyl that will kind of match up with the aesthetic of what was in the box set, um, kind of that split color and uh, overall packaging to fit in there. And I know that was intended as an overall package, but let's be honest, if you're a real fan, you've got that slip mat on your turntable, you've got the, uh, you've got the book on the coffee table, so there's plenty of room for another album in that box set. Um, well, maybe uh, three or four. So, um, yeah, I just wonder if that's going to be an option. I'd love to see it happen. Um, thanks for uh, all the great music. Bye. Ryan, thanks for the call. Great idea. Box set, man. Thank you for 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 supporting us in that, man. That was such a cool a cool thing that I still can't believe we got to do. Um, I would say, one, we made the box set and we left an extra space for 
a box set or, you know, sorry, sorry for the new album. Cause we knew at that point we were going to do a new album at some point. And so we're like, well, we might as well leave one more space, you know, to be clever. So the box set comes with 10 albums plus space for 11th album. And now your question is, are we going to do an artwork version that fits that aesthetic of the inside of all the stuff? Now, you know, we definitely toyed with that idea. It's a great idea, by the way. Um, but ultimately, I feel like we, because it was the 11th in that session, um, it's the start of a new era. And I think even though that's going to fit in there nicely with the box set, um, it's going to be, it's going to be separate artwork altogether. Now that doesn't mean we don't eventually press uh, a future version of the artwork and do it just for box sets, you know, but, um, but right now, no plans to do that. No, there's so much, <laughs> there's, it's just like, okay, let's put that on the pile too. But, um, I love the ideas. Keep keep those ideas coming because it's always possible in the future, even if we're not planning on it right now. Um, and a lot of times, to be honest, Tom Chichilla, um, he he's sort of like alpha team member, CEO <laughs> kind of guy. <laughs> um, he might already have plans for that, you know, and I just don't even know about it. So that's very possible as well. Um, cool. Let's get to the next caller. Hey, Mike, this is Steven from Milwaukee, and I wanted to get your opinion on screaming vocals. Uh, MXPX has some songs that I would consider to be shouting vocals, some heavier punk sound songs with shouting, like Fist vs. Tact or um, Get Me Out. But when you guys had been a band probably already for like 10 years, like early 2000s, mid 2000s, there was this wave of bands within the scene, like within the Warped Tour scene that started to get really big that had full on screaming vocals like Under Oath and um, Norma Jean. And then even some bands that maybe had mostly singing, but would incorporate screaming too, like Silverstein, Story of the Year, The Used, uh, Hawthorne Heights. My question for you, what was your reaction when those bands started getting popular? Did it did you have a reaction to that style of vocal, and did did your reaction change? Do you personally enjoy screaming vocals? And did it kind of just seem like, oh, man, this is the new wave, like the new wave of bands in our scene. They're all screaming. What what are we going to do? <laughs> um, the one example that I can think of of MXPX having what I would call like full-on screaming is um, the intro to Play It Loud, the one, two, three, go at the beginning of Play It Loud, I would consider that screaming. I'm assuming that's you who's doing that vocal. Was that difficult to record? Did you enjoy that? Um, whose idea was it to kind of have that be more of a screaming style? And, uh, yeah, just wanted to get your thoughts on that. You always have really, really interesting reactions to things. And uh, I wanted to say thanks for taking my call. Thanks for all the MXTX memories. And uh, I'm sure it won't be the last time I call. Thanks, Mike. Cool. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah, that's interesting. I, you know, no, there was no like, what are these guys doing? Because I came from a hardcore background as well as a punk background. So it wasn't just about singing for me always. Even though I wasn't necessarily a screamer, uh, a lot of bands I liked growing up were, were screaming. You know, um, a lot of those hardcore bands like Focused, you know, we saw those guys early on. Uh, that were, They were signed to Tooth and Nail. Focused, Tim Mann, the singer, he screamed. He, those guys were awesome. Uh, they, they, they were basically metal, you know, it was like a, you know, that's what kind of hardcore became. But for, for me, it was hardcore was like a, a harder version of punk, you know, hardcore punk. Right. But hardcore, uh, I really liked it. I liked the gorilla biscuits, all that stuff. Uh, loved that. stuff. I mean, that wasn't even screaming really back then. That was like, da, 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 you know, and so like, that's the style that I like, you know, and, and, and I feel like that's what you're talking about with, with uh fist versus tact and get me out. It's, uh, it's yelling. It's definitely yelling. It's scream. I mean, to me, it's screaming. I mean, if you saw me in the, in the room, I'm screaming, I'm writhing on the floor on get me out. I think there's a video clip somewhere. So I, I probably have it where I'm, I'm in the studio and I'm just writhing on the floor with a microphone, just get me out. If that's not screaming, Steven, I can't help you. 
But uh, <laughs> as far as play it loud goes, that idea, I mean, when you're in the studio, a lot of times I'm just trying things a few different ways to see what, what fits, what sounds good. And for me, I want to get all of my energy out there, but I also want to be able to sing it live again later. So I, I feel like that's why I don't necessarily scream absolutely balls to the wall because I want to do something that I can actually do all the time. Um, f far away, there's a screaming part in that. Far away off of our uh, Plans Within Plans album. Check that out. Tell me what you think. Um, but um, yeah, no, uh, to me, it was a continuation of bands like the Blood Brothers and um, there was, uh, I can't remember all these little, they, were, they never really got big necessarily, but there was a lot of bands that were screamo before screamo was a thing. And I would, I would, I would dare say Arthur almost became a screamo band because we had, we were doing it before screamo was a scream. We didn't know it was screamo, but what we were doing was super soft, almost 1950s style, slow, haunting music, melodic singing. But then it would get super loud and slow. Da, 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 ga, do, do, do. And then if you had, ah, there was a couple songs we had on our first EP that really had screaming towards the end. Um, Friday, April 6th had screaming. And that was full on like back and forth, quiet, loud. And that was kind of influenced by those early hardcore bands and we just didn't have a screamer in the band and then we had a singer and that became that was a thing you know right alongside probably like when arthur arthur had already moved on to just being more of a more of a pop rock band in a way um rather than an indie indie post-punk band um but that's because, you know, I'm influenced songwriting-wise by the Beatles and things that are really, really in my core. But then also I'm influenced by these hardcore bands, you know. So, like, I get that nastiness. I get that that sloppiness and the, the recklessness. And then I infuse it with uh, really lush, try to infuse it with lush melodies and really cool, cool-sounding, catchy vibes. So... Yeah, that's my story. Let's see what's next. Yo, Mike. Eric calling from Philly. Still out here mourning the uh, Super Bowl. Um, I had a comment and a quick question, if I can. Uh, the comment is, on a recent episode, I remember you referencing the Stanford prison experiment. And I don't know if you know, but actually in the last few years, some revelations have come out about that experiment. And apparently, it's to be regarded as almost totally fraudulent. Um, I've read some exposés and some interviews, um, some pretty damning stuff about that experiment, and apparently there was a lot of coaching going on. So the you know the students who were hired to play the role of guards were coached to um, to be more cruel and act more power hungry than they than they ordinarily would have in order to try to um, create the type of results they were looking for. Of course, they are doing that. Yes, I'm. You know, somehow I'm not surprised, Derek. Okay, go on. And likewise. The, um, the prisoners were coached to respond, um, you know, volatilely and violently in the way that in the way that they did. Um, and so, you know, people are saying that really that whole thing should be regarded. I mean, I guess almost more as performance art than any kind of legitimate scientific experiment. So, you know, maybe not the 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 indictment of humanity's uh, tendency towards cruelty um, that we were taught it was. Not that humanity doesn't tend toward cruelty, but maybe that just isn't the proof that we all we all thought it was. So I just thought that was pretty interesting. And my question is um, about the Tumble Down song, Son of a Gun, which is one of my favorite tracks you've ever done. Um, for the life of me, I can't, I can't figure out who it is, and I've looked everywhere. I don't know if I'm just missing it, but I can't figure out who it is um, that you duet with on that song. Um, but whoever it is, his voice is unbelievable. And the sound you know, of, of your two voices blended together is just my favorite. So I figure the um, best way to find out would be to call and ask uh, ask you directly. Um, so it would be great if you could let me know that and appreciate all that you do. All right. Take care, Mike. Peace. Dude, thanks, Eric. 
Um, first, I'll just answer the question. Uh, son of a gun. Um, that was John Snodgrass, and he's a great uh, indie artist. He does his own solo tours all the time, so he might be in your area. Uh, you never know. Philly, he's always probably over there. Um, Drag the River was uh, a band that I, we, you know, Tumble Down used to tour with them quite a bit, and that's how I got to know them. So they were in town. We, we, we opened for them when they were in Bremerton one night, and after the show, they came out and uh, very drunkenly came out to the studio, and, and um, we recorded that bit. It was, it was uh, very fun. It was a great night. As far as the Sanford prison experiment, you know, that does not surprise me one bit really hearing it because, you know, you hear about all these videos you see uh, online right now and and they're all set up. They're set up videos and, and they're like people doing weird things in public to other people. And then you realize that's that's what why are they doing? This? Oh, it's it's fake. They're just setting it up. It's like almost everything is a setup these days. And it's kind of annoying. It's just something you have to be aware of. Um, PSYOP is uh, a word that I've been seeing a, a lot lately with all the Chinese balloons and the UFO talk and the experiments and the, you know, the, the media not wanting to put their attention on, on things that are damning towards the government or towards big corporations. You know, this thing with, uh, what is it, East Palestine, Ohio, Ooh, you know, the EPA is trying to cover this up. It sounds like, this, this looks to me like uh, an episode of The Simpsons, you know, something they predicted long ago where they're just going to put a, a glass dome over that area and just call it a day. But I do not, I, it's a bummer that, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bummer that it's been faked, but it's also nice that it's like, okay, good. Then these people maybe weren't going to be just dicks, you know, just automatically, you know, given given some power. Um, not everybody craves power, right? All right, that's great. I appreciate uh, that's a great call. I appreciate you guys. Um, let's do one more. Hey, Mike, it's Bill from Brockport calling in again. Um, was just wondering if we can ever expect Can't Keep Waiting to come out as a vinyl seven inch, or if it's something that's maybe going to be on the next record. Just a quick little question to get things started there. Hope you have a nice day. Thank you again. Bye. Great question. You know, do you want it to be on the next record? Or would you rather have all new songs? See, that's that's the question. Um, for me, Can't Keep Waiting, I thought, could be on the new record. Absolutely. But also, it seems like, one, it's been so long since we recorded it. Two, uh, it's kind of a bridge to the past life and the new life that we have, you know, these, these between this world and the next kind of thing. We, we actually worked out that song when we were doing those shows live on the internet between this world and the next. And so it's got a life of its own apart from, I think what our new album is going to be. And so for that reason, really alone, um, I think, no, it's not going to be on the new record. But could it be on a 7-inch someday? Yes, it, it, it absolutely could. It, it, it definitely could. Um, these days, we've been holding off on on 7-inches because it's just really hard to get things pressed. And if you're going to get something pressed, you might as well get a, a full thing pressed rather than a little thing pressed. So, But eventually, I think that's going to ease up. And, and yeah, we'll be back to ordering 7-inches as well. And uh, we can do some collectors kind of stuff like that. I, lo I love doing that kind of stuff. And, and Can't Keep Waiting, honestly, uh, I love how that song came out. I love how the lyrics came out. I love playing it. I love, you know, it's one of my favorite ones to do. Um, so you'll, you'll be hearing it from us, even if it's not on the new record. Speaking of new record, it's getting closer. We're working on it. We're working on it. Not ready to announce anything yet. But we are working on the new stuff. So thank you guys for your for your patience. I know it's been a hard 2023 so far. But hey, we're going to get there together. Okay? Thank you guys so much. I want to thank Bob McKnight for producing and editing the podcast and giving me his, his time and his uh, energy. 
and most importantly, his talents to the podcast. Um, his podcast is called The Bob and Katie Show. It's a comedy podcast. They talk about weird butt stuff and other things, and uh, they, they talk about music a lot, too. But uh, I think you guys might dig it. All right, you guys. Until next week, please call in. Uh, that number is 830. So, yeah, 830. Sorry. 360-830-6660. Had to get it in order. MXPX.com. Thanks for your orders. Appreciate you guys. Um, and ladies, ladies, feel free to call in. We always could use, use, uh, a little bit of, uh, your sweet voices on the podcast. Speaking of which, Josh Kennedy hit me up the other day and said, Hey, this is probably too late for your last podcast, but please give a shout out to Jen Hill. Happy belated birthday to Jen Hill. Thanks for listening. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for what you, uh, doing what you do throughout your day. Um, I'm sure you're very appreciated, very loved, and I uh, just wanted to wish you a happy belated birthday and a shout out and happy birthday from Josh Kennedy. All right, that's it. We're done, you guys. Peace out. Till next week.